So this video is just a quick video to show you the the length of the whale trail from Wallet to Sabden or Hay Houses. So the first whale I found was over in the far corner of Wally Woods, Spring Woods. Okay. Now there's two ways you can get to the fish trail and it starts basically there. But then that's the first that's the first fish at Spring Woods. The second fish is up and over onto Whistle Rough. So you're going up and over that big mound what you can see in the distance but you don't get to it from going that way you get to it from parking up at Parsley Barn now to find Parsley Barn a lot of you will know it but a lot of you won't and it is actually on my map so the only way you can get a map is either to download it from a Facebook page which, which I ask you you can do or you can come to my next art exhibition which will be announced shortly so the majority of the fish the rest of the fish are close by Paisley Barn now as we know Paisley Barn was a tithe barn and it collected the taxes and it was um, a Paisley the last abbot of Warley um, that took those taxes okay so you do have to go across the road to get to get the other three fish um, but they are detailed on the map so I will be giving coordinates for some of the fish but not all of the fish the, 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 the fish the overall fish are on the map and it's up to you to decode that map and it's like a puzzle because I found this to be a puzzle to find these fish it took me 10 years to piece them all together to find them to lock them into place and produce this work which is quite um, a substantial amount of work so the trail is about three miles long that's if you set off from there and you go that distance but you can actually set off from there and get get in the car and then go around and park up by Paisley Barn and then follow the uh, fish trail I will be doing a fish trail walk up Springwood to celebrate that first fish and I will be placing some fish stones so they will take you up to the direction of where the actual fish is now that will be being announced shortly on my Facebook page and I'll probably put it on the Waller historical page as well and the Pendle Witch page okay so just bringing it all together now and just showing you what a beautiful landscape it is and how we must protect our forest and we must protect those ancient trackways okay so you don't have to clamber up onto virgin ground which that is the brown area where man really hasn't been you can I still find this evidence in on the lower grounds and actually in your woodlands okay and that is the point what I wanted to get across with this entire piece of work so thanks for watching and um, I hope that makes things a little bit clearer. Thank you. So I've just driven down here heading towards Sabden. There's Clark Hill. And if anybody is looking for Jack Nave's grave, by the way, which is Bronze Age Barrow, is see the dry stone wall there it's to the left where we are looking now okay it's to the left going across you know it's 
literally on the top so you'd have to, to get to it either go up Clark Hill or go from Parsley Barn which is just there down from the Nick of Pendle so that's Jet Naves Ground but it is actually on a Bronze Age Barrow okay um, there's an interesting little quarry there in the green area but the virgin ground is the, the the light brown. That's where you're getting all your ancient chambers, okay? You are early Neolithic and Neolithic and some Bronze Age. Not all Bronze Age, there's quite quite a bit. Quite a bit of Bronze Age up there. In fact, quite a lot of Bronze Age up there. Um, and it goes all the way up over Pendle. So, to stick with the fish trail now, you won't find any of the fish up there what I found. There might be more, there might be more. Um, but I'm going to be taking you up and over to... I'm not recording those fish up there today. I'm going to fish stone number seven. Now, fish number seven is one of the fish where I will be giving out the coordinates. Okay, because it's quite an easy fish to find so if it's you know it's a nice gentle walk so you can see the nick of pendle which is literally just behind those trees there i'll just move over so to the right of those trees is the nick of pendle and i don't know if you can see that but there's a barn that's paisley barn it's quite easy to see from the road when you're going up over pendle from the sabden side so coming from Warley, along Warley Road, up into Sabden, you'll pass the Pendle Witch on your right hand side. And you'll be coming to a crossroad in a minute. So the post office on your left and you turn left at the junction and that starts taking you up to Pendle Hill. Okay, so I'll be, I'll be getting off at the cattle grid to look at fish number seven, but to go to the rest of the fish, you need to be going a bit further up before the nick and park on your right hand side to get onto the Whistle Rough, which is on your left hand side, just before the Nick of Pendle. So there's the Nick of Pendle, just you can see it, and that is Whistle Rough, that's the virgin ground, and that's where you can just park up either on your left there or on your right. There is a farm gate on your left, which will take you down the old Rumbles Way, which is the ancient trackway. The ancient trackway just carry on and up over the, uh, just past that big boulder on your right. To get to Fish Tone 7, you park at the cattle grid here. You park along here and you follow the track. Keep it to the track and keep it right. So you don't want to be going up over the the trickle mines. You want to be going around to the right. Once past the mines, you will then start seeing some ancient stones. And the one of the fish is by the Solar of the Year wheel, which the late John Dixon found. I just hope you can hear this. So, stand by this fan, it might break the wind. The, the, the actual fish number seven it is by the summer of the year wheel that, that the late John Dixon found, okay? So, once you find that, I will be giving the coordinates out for that, by the way. So, um, fish stone four and five are up on the high point of that mound there. You can see the mound. That's along the old Rumbles where, where the sheep are on your left hand side there, but a lot further along, okay? 
So this is the, one of the fish that is quite easy to get to. In fact, it is the easiest one to get to, to be honest with you. So I'm just by the fish stone, fish number seven. And uh, I'm just recording some detail on it. So I'm just going to put this on for a bit of an added. So we've got a cut mark there. Now there's no way that's a shotgun mark because you'd have to be for that to happen you'd have to be literally on your hands and knees with your backside in the air it's close close range to be able to get that in there now I'm sticking my finger in there and you can see it's up to the knuckle I didn't notice that before Okay, we have got another something there going on here, possibly, um, some decoration. Just remember a lot of these stones are decorated and they're just laid down. And that's natural because you can see the line going in. Um, I think there must have been another PC and it's been broken off at some point in the past. Further details, that could be natural, got a groove there, and I've got further marks and detail. And it goes way down there, look. That must be two foot. It's, it's huge. So we've got cut marks there, one, two, three. I have documented these with my marbles. Beautiful groove. Cut mark, another cut mark there, see? Another cut mark there. And we've got some beautiful marks just here. I think that's a bit too close, actually. When I put my medium sized marbles in there, it gave me a beautiful floral pattern. So, possible another cut mark there. Just looking at that, I think that's natural. And then on this side, we've got some more possible cut marks. You can see the groove, it's quite an impressive groove. We have got a curvature on the, on the whale, the stone. You'll see when I was taking the, the photograph up here, that's east over there, okay. So the groove, of the tail aligns beautifully with the groove of the hill across there and that's the east but then we have got another spectacular part of the stone and it curves round with a notch in it now this stone is colossal because it goes down deep it really does go down deep there's more marks here, possible more cut marks. Got a beautiful stone here. Then we've got alignment stones. I've not checked, I've never checked these alignment stones out. Um, just in line with Monty, that's where the solar of the year wheel is, what the late John Dixon found. But I think you'll agree it's quite an impressive stone. And at a very south there. Colossal mound actually, and it does require study. It is filled with these stones, similar sizes, bigger in, in many places, and with just as many cut marks and design or decorative work. is 
only there and I am going to take you there in a minute these are just little add-ons for this video presentation I'm making I hope the wind's not too too bad on the film um, so there's a track where you don't want to be going around that corner and going heading off towards the reservoir as well before that and goes up towards the nick of Pendle okay so if you want to walk up here you come to the solar of the year wheel that the late John Dixon found it's got some interesting marks I'm not sure which is the, the solar of the year wheel it could be the point one but there are three stones it's not just one it's a trio of stones Okay, it's a trio of stones, and like I said, that mound is a very special mound, and it has like an entrance, a solar entrance going all along. And that mound is a high one. This is just part of the solar entrance to the big mound, which is sat further down, and that's where fish stone number six, five, and six is located. So you could go along the top, um, the old Rambles way, and keep going up, and go to fish number five and six, and then you can drop down along one of these paths where come down and find number seven. Okay, I hope that's clear enough. And while whilst you're down here, you could actually look at the rest of the stones. This one looks like it's been um, pushed over. That line with the stone. And we've got another. Come here, Mont. Got another beautiful stone here. This is Pendle Grit. It's quite a dark grey, very gritty, very hard. It's a very hard stone really hard. And then we've got the solar of the year wheel there. And what makes this one special is on the southern side this is west. west going that way. I just thought to give you a little bit more uh, detail on the video what to look for. I haven't documented those stones. I haven't documented those stones. There are so many stones in this area. Um, if there's any dowsers out there, there's a beautiful spring area just there. And there are more mountains. 
lots of little mounds. And I don't think, I don't think they're mined areas. I think those are Bronze Age. I could be wrong. Um, purely because the stone layout, because there are some of these stones laid out in there. Um, and there are quite a few um, chambers all along that area. Set in a really wet area. So if there's any dowsers out there what would like to come up and um, check that area out. On the road, we've got some amazing, amazing coverings. 